Triple Dino YouTube channel. And of course we look at uh, dive travel, dive equipment, photography, tips, tricks, that sort of thing in a more amateur, not a professional sort of a style. We look at resorts as well, dive, dive travel resorts that I've traveled to and some that I've uh, reviewed and that sort of thing. So um, today's edition is going to be uh, refurbishing some of my equipment. And that will be something I do quite often, uh, two, three times a year. And that is with a polycarbonate dome port. Um, you're going along the reef or you're looking at something and a rock will come along, you misjudge the distance and it'll scrape on here. Or you put your rig into the boat and it rubs up against rubs up against another piece of equipment or just on the side of the, the bin that it's in or or your tips over onto the reef and scratches. Bottom line is we've got enough scratches on here that it's going to affect photography, particularly when the sun comes down and shines, it'll refract right into the camera lens. So, and then it'll show up as a bright spot. However, if you shoot like you're supposed to, which is with the, the light behind you, um, you may never see the scratches underwater because the water goes into the cracks, fills them in, and then you have a clean shot most of the time. But the second you get uh, any white object that will reflect any light back in here, um, then you see, you'll see um, the cracks, or, or sorry, not the cracks, but the uh, scratches pretty vividly and they'll refract into your lens and, and blur and make all kinds of um, uh, distort your shot. So I'm going to go over how I resurface this so that it's just like new. We'll go through step by step, including the products that I use to achieve that clean, that clean look. You can see the scratches. This is an Eichlite 8 inch dome port polycarbonate dome port, dome port, pardon me. And you can see the scratches as soon as it scratches much easier than glass. But unlike glass, you can resurface it. You don't have to buy a new port. Now a lot of uh, photographers or whatever that have this port say, well, you don't need to do anything to it because the water fills in the cracks and and you don't really see it. Well, that's partially true, but if you were to get any sunlight to come in, it, it will refract on these cracks. I'm trying to get a clear view so you can see it. Um, it will refract on those cracks, and uh, then you'll be able to see it. And I'll I'll post video of. Uh, manta rays sort of rolling in Rajampat and you'll see the underside of them when the sun hits their bright white bellies. You can see all the nasty scratches on this thing by the end of it. So um, in a situation like that it kind of it doesn't ruin your video but you know it's it's less than optimal for sure. Professionally I guess it would be ruined <laughs> for a professional but. Uh... Here we are we're just about to clean we're going to go over the the items that you're going to need are the tools to turn this scratchy surface back into a nice clean dome port to use underwater so you don't get any aberrations and stuff like that from the from the scratches. So um, you're going to need like a little uh, a dish rag, a tea towel to dry it off each time. Uh, not necessarily dry it each time but at the end uh, and the separation with one of the steps you're going to need to actually dry it off. Uh, you're going to need this between each step because you want to remove uh, the residue that's there so that it doesn't continue to scratch your unit while you're you're going through the transitional phase. Um, dish soap, this is just going to help uh, dislodge any of those uh, micro sanded bits that you're going to find. Uh, and I it, it's not recommended in the kit, but uh, it's not um, avoided either. So that's it's just something I've done and it doesn't seem to affect anything. It just helps the process. Um, 
you know, as far as kits you can purchase, this is a kit you can buy online and it's about uh, 50 60 dollars US and contains um, this is basically just like car polish. Um, and this is like a, a detergent, which is the same as basically the same as the dish detergent here. So I may or may not use I'll definitely use the um, uh, this one here because uh, that's the one that you use just prior to uh, buffing buffing out um, with water. So you it's when you're starting to get so fine you can't even use sandpaper. Uh, there's some instruction booklets here which I no longer use, but when I first started, I, I watched them carefully. Um, here's a new bunch of uh, sandpapers here, and this is my old one. So I might just use the old one. Since these are like uh, emery cloths, you can use them a lot long time, but these are only good when they're wet, so don't use them when they're dry ever. And a key point here is this is absolutely critical a flat, good sized sanding pad so you get equal dispersion of pressure because as soon as you get unequal dispersion of pressure then you get unequal sanding that will occur on your dome port and then you're gonna see maybe you know a stripe down the middle or something like that and it just doesn't work out very well. So in general what you're gonna want to do is figure out a way that you're going to orientate this thing and um, <clears throat> I believe there's little screws on here so that's how I sort myself out I just kind of get that towards me and then you're going to want to go in the same direction each time and the whole idea is here is to make you're going to actually scratch it and you're going to scratch it in a certain direction and then you're going to sort of use finer and finer and finer until there's so many scratches that it actually creates a, a clear surface so that's the th kind of the theory. And I sometimes turn this around 180 degrees and because I'm either left or right handed, right? So whichever way I'm sanding, I want to make sure that my, if it's this hand, it's going to be on that side. And if I want to do the other side, then I just do this, flip it around 180 and then do the other side. So you might see me doing that during the video. So. If, if you can use one hand to do the whole thing, that's no problem. Then you don't need to, you know, change this around. Let's see if there's one on the other side. There is. So there's one at 180 degrees on the other side as well. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to start out um, with the roughest grit. And we're going to, well, first of all, we're going to clean it off with soap and water in the sink here. And uh, so that it's totally clean and before we start so we don't add any more damage. And the idea here is we need to scratch this down to the deepest scratch that exists on here already. So if you just got some blemishes on here, you, you might be able to start a little higher up in the in the scale. So we're going to use the one that's been used for a while. So it starts at um, starts at I believe 1500. So there's 1500. And uh, you end up at about 12,000. Yeah, 12,000. So, and it goes up in increments, not this is the biggest increment from 8,000 to 12,000. But you start out at 1,500. And the idea is there is that you want to get this thing, it'll basically turn white, it'll look worse than ever like a snowed surface and you want it all the same color and the same tone. You don't want any clear spots with or you don't want to attempt to just sand the areas that are scratched. You don't want to do that. You want the whole dome to be treated all at the same time equally. And so that no matter which way you're, you take your shot, you're going to get the same density, the same uh, if the scratch continues and you don't see it, it doesn't matter because you've done the whole dome. All kinds of reasons why you want to do the whole dome. Um, again, if the, if you notice the scratches aren't very deep, you, you can probably start, maybe you can start, you know, farther up. Maybe you can start at 3,000 or something, or maybe you can start at 2,400. Makes sense, right? If, only if, you can get the whole surface uh, down to the deepest depth of the deepest 
scratch that exists on here. That's your goal is to get down. You have to get at least down there. Otherwise, if you think about it, you don't get down to the deepest scratch. You're going to leave a mark and you're not going to be happy with the result after all that work. So definitely want to, um, uh, you know, do it right. I, I tend to go right down to 1500 every single time. Uh, because I don't necessarily clean it unless I have to and, and this is just borderline like normally I probably would have left this But um, I'm you know a lot of these are just smudges, so this isn't gonna take much to do this This one here I can feel with my fingernail So if you can feel it with your fingernail. That's a deep one Anything deep will grab your fingernail, so that's yeah, maybe it does need to get done here that, that one There's pretty deep so um, we're going to go ahead and do the whole thing now. Okay, first things first, let's uh, rinse the dome off. And then we get a little bit of soap on here. We'll get up just a little bit of soap. This soap, the standard dish soap. Put it on here. Helps if the water is hot, but eventually it'll be so hot that you won't be able to put your hand under here so you know, that just makes sure that you start with a clean surface and you don't add any further damage so we'll start with the 50, the 1500 grit and the pad and like I said before we need to get this we need to get this completely wet and then we just fold it over like this and this is how we're going to manipulate and so I just find that center point. I put my hand there. And normally I'd, I'd get a, um, I'll just get a little platter here so you can see it. So what I'm gonna do is just go back and forth with the 1500 grit. You don't have to press too hard. You just let the sandpaper do the work. But you want to be firm enough that you are touching all the surfaces. If you don't press hard enough, you're not going to get some of the glass. Now I'm going to turn this around 180 degrees. Got my orientation point because I need to do the back side now. So I just continue on, try to get in the same direction. time doing this the first code I find is the most important so you have to be most thorough on this first one this is the most important if you've ever done this with your headlights on your car it's kind of the same thing it's just that you have to be much obviously much more careful with this one okay so now you can see that it's just kind of blurred it up and there's a thin you know, uh, the fi almost not filings, but the sandings are on there. And I'm going to put a little bit of soap on there, gently with my hand, and we're going to wash it off. We're going to do this between each layer. There we go. So now, this is when I go hunting, looking for... Looking for marks. It looks like we're pretty good. So I see something right there. So maybe I'm just going to do a little bit more right there. There, and you can see just that's made a huge difference. I can't see any marks at all on this. So 
our orientation points are right here where the little the screws are, the little um, Allen, Allen bolts are on each side. So we know that the, the grain is going this way, the sanding. So we're going to continue on that. I'm going to go to the next. I'm going to rinse this one off and now I go on to the next one, which I believe is 1800. So yeah, we're going to go to 1800. Get this all wet. Get that going and we will Once you get good at this, you can you can do this actually when you're on holidays and you s scratch a reef or something, you, you can recover from it really quickly and you just go back to your unit and, and resurface. And actually do a pretty good job and get yourself out of a situation where you've gotten... Because you want to get good pictures when you're on vacation, right? So there we go. And we're gonna rinse that off a little bit. Soap. And do that very carefully each and every time. Make sure I'm orientated. Clean this piece of sandpaper off because you weren't contaminated. And I'll just keep going until I get to one of the last coats. Okay, so now I'm on to the last one. So 12,000 grit. This is the last of the sandpaper and then we just go into the other. You can see that it's just a little bit misty, foggy looking. Some of that's fog because it's getting, you know, the heat, the heat of this and it's condensing on the inside of here. So it's, some of that's actually just fog, but some of it actually is a haze that's appearing on the polycarbonate. So that's when we start bringing in this stuff and it might not, this is basically just car polish. You can use car polish or anti-scratch on that. And um, for that I'm going to need a microfiber towel. So I'm going to have to come back. So you could use this. This is scratch remover. It's just basically car polish. Uh, probably a little bit more abrasive than normal car polish. That will, it's cream, and it will help get rid of the haziness of any par polycarbonate, including the headlights in your car. But this is the stuff that comes with their uh, kit. So I'm going to try that first. If I'm not satisfied with it, I'll go ahead and use the car polish. So we'll get this down. Bring it out a bit. I'll just get a little edge of it here. And about the size of a dime, unless it's really watery. This isn't even coming out of here, so this has probably been in the just like any other car polish. to show you. Anyway, I've got lots on there now. So again, this is the one that comes with the kit. So I'm going to apply a bit of pressure to this because you want this to, you know, split those lines even more to make even less of a chance of the haziness because that's the whole like, goal right now is getting rid of the haziness. 
to mind our direction. One more, and then we're going to clean it with uh, glasses cleaner, which is just that spray you use for your glasses, which is high, like a high alcohol content. Um, I think just to make sure, I'm going to use a little bit of a little bit of this, which is the car polish, just to show you that I'm not afraid to use it. Just kind of gloms on here a little bit better than the other stuff, which kind of just it's very liquefied, it's probably just old. <sighs> Looks like I've got a little bit of condensation and water on the inside of the. dome as well so I'm gonna have to dry that off so because we don't want any you know condensation haze because that's just kind of fools you a little bit so I need to we need to get this dry now go ahead and get dry this off as best we can Tell us basically where we're at. It can be very tricky to dry the inside here. You gotta have tiny little hands, or you might have to take the port body off. My hands are pretty big, so it's it's quite a job for me to get my hands in here. As long as you're not sort of fooled by the condensation as per the haziness as well. And I'm just going to clean it one more time. It looks really good so far. It looks like we're very, very close. You can see it's pretty nice now. There's a few little scuffs on here, but nothing serious, nothing anywhere near the way it was. So we'll just spray it with the Glasses, glass cleaner. I'll just try to wipe the inside too as best I can, because some of this, some of these streaks might be on the other side of the glass. So I. Hopefully you can see that. It looks much better than it was. Much better than it was. And that's another thing is you can look through it, of course. But, you know, you could see a little bit through here. It doesn't look very, it's not very flattering me putting this up to the camera, but, um, it actually looks pretty good with my eye, but the camera's picking up refractions in, in the little blemishes and stuff like that, but it is actually pretty good. As you can see, it's, it's much nicer than it was before. And this is good enough to take photography in now. I wouldn't have to worry about this too much now. Very minimal refraction with the lens very close to the edge. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.